Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. All right. Thank you. All right, so thank you all for joining. Josevas is a registered company that provides the following services. We take training in the field of petroleum engineering, petroleum geoscience, mining engineering, and uh, geological science. We also offer consultation services and a mentorship program. And uh, we offer assistance to MSc and uh, PhD students for their thesis. Our mission is to turn theory into multi-dimensional practical integration and to take students closer to industry standard. So we have for our oil and gas package, we have a whole lot of software that we train our participants with. We have Softwares like we have Excel for oil and gas. We have Petrel, and uh, this Petrel we can do seismic interpretation, static modeling, dynamic modeling, well engineering, and uh, rock physics analysis. And then we also have Eclipse for numerical simulation. I'm going to explain this concept later. Numerical simulation, numerical and uh, simulation. Then we have CMG and uh, T Navigator that also offers that also does this numerical simulation perfectly. And then we have interactive petrophysics and TED log for petrophysical analysis. And then even going right to geomechanics and rock physics, producing rock physics template. So we have our well flow for well modeling. For well modeling, we are going to see this term because uh, practically today that's what we are looking at, which is nodal analysis, trying to see how we can model our well to get the performance of that well to see how we can analyze what that well can produce and at what time we expect to re-energize the system. So we have a fracate and frac pro for hydraulic fracturing. Hydraulic fracturing is a means of uh, production enhancement, which we are going to talk about later. And then we have the handsome Roussel for seismic inversion. We have pipes in also for well modeling. Well modeling is what we are talking about today, which we are going to look at. So we have steam kate also for acid stimulation simulation modeling. So we are going to talk about that briefly ahead. And then uh, we also have petroleum expert software, which is the IPM 11. We are choosing to use one of the latest uh, version of this software because most of the time we have the version of 7.5, which is generally free online, but there are a lot of things, especially when it comes to embal, that they cannot do. There are a lot of things that it comes to embal that they cannot do, for example, the 7.5 will do water flooding analysis and maybe CO2 injection, but for 11, it goes further to do polymer flooding, surfactant flooding, steam injection, various form of gas injection also. So there are a lot of things apart from the graphic. It has a better graphic. Apart from that, there are a lot of things that the latest version of Embal, Prosper, and GAP can do that the other versions do, cannot do. So we also have a Kappa workstation. We have Kappa workstation. We have Cypher. Under the Kappa workstation, we are taking training on Cypher for pressure transit analysis, to packs for rate transit analysis, and emeroid for production logging. Production log logging is a very important aspect in production analysis because it gives us an idea about liquid holdup and also gives us the density of the various phases that are flowing inside the tubing. Then for PVT analysis and the equation of state modeling, which I'll talk about briefly, we can use PVT SIM, which is another uh, software. Then we have oil fuel yeah, management. Oil fuel we have oil yeah, fuel oil management. Please, uh, uh, a second. So as I said, uh, Kappa workstation, we have Cypher for pressure transit analysis and to parks for rate transit analysis. The key difference between pressure transit analysis and rate transit analysis 
is that for pressure transit analysis, you need to shut down the well. And that is not always a good news for investors because they always want the well running so that they can get more profit. But for rate transit analysis, you are using the regular, the, the regular production data that you obtain every day. So you don't need to shut down the well or do some kind of spatial measurement for you to carry out the analysis. But the key point is both of them are used to analyze the reservoir properties. Then we have petrol mode for 3D basin modeling. All right. I hope everyone can see my PowerPoint. Please indicate, please. Can anyone see my PowerPoint? Yes, I can see the PowerPoint. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. PowerPoint to let me trace far. Yes, it will be five or the my training for all direction. All right, so if we move further from there. All right, so our stomach internship is going to be a three months internship for oil and gas practice. That will start from the 1st of June to the 25th of August. And what are the benefits of this training? We have, we are going to provide all software. We have certificates of completion at the end of the day. We have a lot of theoretical concepts that we have to go through before we go to the practical interpretation. Then we are going to provide the YouTube links of all videos that we are going to do each day and we put them on YouTube. We send you people the, the link and then you can go through the videos anytime at any point in time you have uh, free access lifetime free access for the videos. And even if you missed a, a particular session because of one reason or the other, you can always go back to the YouTube uh, videos and you follow the YouTube videos. So we are going to be using uh, a lot of software for this training. We have uh, petrophysical, petrophysics. We are going to do drilling, reservoir engineering, production engineering, we use software like Excel, Tedlock, Petroleum Expert, Fratcate, and Frac Pro. And uh, the price tag for this internship, which is a three months internship, is uh, $200. But we have an early bird registration that ends at the end of April of $150. For $150. All right. So the uh, training is arranged in a way that follow more or less the production profile of a general well production. So we always start from at the level of exploration, the level of exploration where we have this seismic that is carried over a very wide area, and then it now narrows it to a, an area that has been well defined and studied. And then from there now they move to the appreciation level where we have to drill some wells, they drill the white card well, they drill the conformation well to at least ascertain that there is hydrocarbon in, uh, in the uh, reservoir. So that by the time we get to the manage to the, the reservoir development phase, we are already sure a hundred percent that there is hydrocarbon inside the reservoir. And then we now have the production phase. And at one point in time, production starts declining. That's where the companies start ask, asking themselves what they can do to re-energize the system. They now start bringing in other forms of uh, production mechanisms like the EOR, the enhanced oil recovery, to see how they can enhance the production. So our first week is going to be on petrophysics. Petrophysics, we are going to use TED law. And mostly in petrophysics, we carry out qualitative analysis to identify the reservoirs, identify the fluid type and what type of hydrocarbon we have there. We have to carry out quantitative analysis like calculating volume of shale, calculating the effective and total porosity 
We have to calculate water saturation. We have to calculate permeability, net to gross, and all of these things. And then we determine the lithology and the reservoir rock typing to see how many discrete units we have within that particular reservoir that will determine the flow behavior of the reservoir. In our second week, we are going to do static modeling. So I talked about a numerical simulation and I said we'll discuss that ahead. First thing that we have to note here is static modeling. What's the static modeling? Modeling is just building a picture of a reservoir. You build a 3D picture of the reservoir and how the reservoir looks like in all the various dimensions. How does it actually look like? This is an example of a porosity model that I built in the Ray the Ray Basin. And then we also have the permeability model. This is an example of a permeability model and uh, also the net to gross model. So the difference between modeling and simulation is modeling is giving you a picture of the reservoir, but simulation now is coming in for you to perform different tasks, control different factors, and try to see the performance of the reservoir, especially when it comes to fluid flow, especially when it comes to fluid flow to see how fluid will flow at different point within the reservoir. If you look at, uh, there are different ways of modeling, like uh, we have the, the numerical simulation and uh, we have the analytical simulation. What is the main difference between this numerical simulation and analytical simulation? Analytical simulation simply solves us a problem by using integration or differentiation. So you are applying either differentiation or integration to solve a problem. Like the general Darcy's law is obtained by what? Doing integration, we have a differential equation that you solve it by integration to obtain that Darcy's law. So analytical simulation is obtained by, by doing applying simple differentiation and integration. That is exactly what Baal does. What Baal is doing is analytical simulation because you don't have a picture of the reservoir. What you are trying to do in Baal is just to get the average behavior of the various uh, properties that you have. What is the average pressure of the reservoir? But it doesn't give you exactly what the pressure would be in terms of time and space. That is where now numerical simulation comes in because numerical simulation gives you exactly the behavior of the reservoir with respect to time and space. At this point within the reservoir, how the pressure varies? At this point within the reservoir, how the pressure varies? That's when numerical simulation now comes in. And we mostly do numerical simulation with 3D structure of the reservoir, like a model that, like the model of this reservoir that we have. So for week two, we are going to do, we build the structural model. And then we have to pay, uh, populate some properties on this model, like to see how the velocity, uh, the porosity varies, to see how the net to gross varies, and to see the various fascists at each position. We could also look at the permeability to see how the permeability varies within the formation. The third week, we are going to look at uh, drilling fluid technology, to look at mud pumps and the various types of mud pumps and what calculations you can make from them to get the annular velocity, the velocity of the mud within the tube. And then we also look at other things like the beat and the beat hydraulics equation and the calculation. For week four, we are going to stick with Excel for oil and gas. We see how we can carry out decline curve analysis to do production forecast. Like nodal analysis, what we are trying to explain today, we we'll see how we can develop the various plots using Excel. How do we develop the vertical lift performance? How do we develop the IPR? How do we develop the, the inflow performance relation using an Excel? We also look at relative permeability analysis. I don't want to talk much on this because during the training, we are going to go through all of this theory. And then for week five, we are still sticking with Excel for oil and gas. So we are going to do water flooding, material balance analysis for oil and gas. And we also do well testing, like what I explained, pressure transit analysis, which we are using Cypher. We can also use uh, the Excel to do some of the analysis. All right. For week seven, we are going to do nodal analysis using Prosper. That's exactly the reason why I decided to pick this concept so that we treat it so that when we get to the training, we now understand exactly how it functions. What is, what is nodal analysis? We'll no longer be talking of nodal analysis, but we'll now be using it in solving 
problems to see how we can analyze the system, the production system to know the world, how the world delivers. So from there, we are going to see, I will look at a natural flowing world. We look at multi-layer nodal analysis. We look at dual porosity. This is exactly the picture of dual porosity. We have two types of porosity within the reservoir. We have a matrix and we have fractures. So the fluid first of all flows from the matrix that has a different porosity to the fracture that has a different porosity. So that's where the word dual porosity comes from because the reservoir is fractured. We have two different types of porosity. Then we have gravel pack modeling. So we know that generally during production, we may have high drawdown. This high drawdown at times may peak some minor sand particles within the formation and travels with it inside the well, inside the, the, the borehole. And generally it is dangerous to the equipment. So the production engineer is trying as much as possible to see how he or she can shift out the sand before the hydrocarbon gets into the, the, the well ball. And gravel packing is one of the methods, what is one of the methods of shifting the sand before it gets into the, into the formation. Then we have soccer rod pump. We all know how I'm sure most of us must have heard of soccer rod pump to see how that's an artificial lift method. And that artificial lift method works, comes in when they have done nodal analysis and they realize that the system cannot function naturally. The fluid cannot naturally flow from the bottom of the borehole to the surface. So what does the company do? The company has to come in now with different methods of re-energizing the system. And one of the ways of re-energizing the system, we use the soccer rod pump and we also use the electrical submissible pump. Then I, we decided to bring this software also well flow into it because the well flow brings in the aspect of sensitivity analysis when it comes to nodal analysis. It does it better than prosper sensitivity analysis. What happens if you decide to change the tubing size? How does the, the nodal analysis come? How does it affect the system? How does the, the, the deliverability of the well now, uh, probably how does that affect, aspect affect the deliverability of the well? So we have to now see how we can vary different properties within the reservoir and within the well bore to see how the, the nodal analysis is going to be affected. And then in the, the earthquake, we are going to do reservoir analysis and the simulation using EMBAL. So what I said is what EMBAL is doing is analytical simulation. You don't need the picture of the reservoir. You don't need a 3D dimension of the reservoir. You don't need to know exactly the pressure at each point of the reservoir, but you're dealing with the average pressure in the reservoir. What will be the average pressure in five years, in 10 years? What is going to be the average pressure? It doesn't necessarily mean that every point within that reservoir will have that pressure, but generally that is the average value within that particular reservoir. And then we try to do history matching. I don't want to talk more much on that because we have things that we have to do today. And then we have to do prediction. How do you predict the performance of that reservoir in 20 years, in 30 years, if with or without a well model? Because a well model is a, an effective way of doing production. But if you don't have the well model, what do you do? If the, if the, the nodal analysis is not available, can you do a prediction that is closer to the value? So that's what we mean by with or without a well model. And then we try to look at transmit, uh, transmissibility to see the various reservoir, if there's some kind of flow between the reservoirs. And then we have 1Z uh, uh, water flooding modeling, the decline curve analysis. We we'll not only do water flooding modeling here, we are also going, we are also going to do surfactant flooding, we are going to do steam injection, we are going to do polymer flooding also to see how all of these uh, uh, enhanced oil recovery methods can amplify or maybe increase production. So for the ninth week, we are going to do PVT analysis and equation of state modeling. Generally in EMBAL, if you have worked with EMBAL before, before you start, you have to choose a type of model. Is it a black oil model or a compositional model? Most people have been choosing black oil model, but they don't even know why they have to choose a black oil model. I'll just give a brief picture about that here. We know that generally there are about, well, let's say about five types of different reservoirs. We have black oil, we have black oil, we have volatile oil, we have condensates, we have wet gas, and we have dry gas. So when it comes to black oil, 
it is that reservoir at a state where the content, the gas content there is so low in such a way that it doesn't affect the behavior of the oil that much. It doesn't affect the behavior of the oil that much. At that level now, you can use black oil model. But when it goes now to volatile oil where the content of gas has increased, the gas now start affecting the behavior of the oil. In that case, you cannot just treat them because for black oil, you are treating them as discrete faces. We just say, if it's black oil model, we say we have oil, we have gas. You don't care about the composition of the oil. We don't care about the composition of the, uh, the gas, but you know that you have two separate states, oil and gas. But when the amount of gas increases, when you move to the volatile oil, the gas now starts affecting the behavior of the oil that much. You cannot treat them as separate entities. Just say, let me take oil and gas separately. It will not give you a good prediction. So what we have to use in that case is a compositional model. We have to use a compositional model. The compositional model means that you are considering the various C chain separately. What is the composition of C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, and so on. So you have to get the actual composition. So you cannot be doing a compositional model if they have not actually done a PVT analysis to know the various C chains that are there and what is the percentage of this C chain within that particular hydrocarbon. So that's the main difference between black oil model and compositional model. Black oil, we consider the, the, the distinct states, oil and gas. For compositional, you are considering the composition. It's not a choice, it's not a matter of choice. You cannot use black oil model if you are talking of volatile oil. It will not go. You cannot go to a gas reservoir and you say you want to use black oil model. It will not go. So it's not an issue of choice. By the time you get to that level, you already know that I cannot be using black oil model. I have to use a compositional model. And then uh, for week 10 now, we are going to do well and surface model using uh, GAP. We may have a particular field where we have different worlds that are producing and probably the company wants to minimize cost. So what they will do now is they will do a surface, the surface facility engineer will do some kind of connection that will will bring all these wells together to a single flow line that takes it to the separator. So we have to now model how this entire system will function because the change of any parameter in one well affects the property in the flow line and affects the pressure and everything that you have in the flow line. So we are going to model that particular situation to see how these interconnected wells can actually function effectively. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. You have, in this case, you have half about three, four, three wells, and these three wells are connected. So what GAP does is it tries to see how it can model this situation to see exactly what will be happening in this, in this flow line, to see the various changes that may take place in the flow line. So we are going to connect a well to GAP and all of that. So for week nine, we are going to do hydraulic fracturing, and we have to do that using frac pro and frac -Kate. Hydraulic fracturing is just a means of enhancing production. It comes a time where it comes a time we are going to see that. I think that's one of the first part about skin. It comes a time where the region around the wear ball is damaged. And there is an additional pressure drop when the fluid gets towards the wear ball. So the fluid doesn't flow easily inside the wear ball. So in that case, what does the company do? They have to strategize on how to treat that particular met that particular scenario so that they might have, they might optimize production. So hydraulic fracturing may come in and then you may also, the company may decide to do an acid treatment instead of carrying out hydraulic fracturing. So that is what we are going to do for those, for the two weeks. All right, so that is that. I think we'll now get ourselves to our presentation of today. <laughs>